Hello lecture laners. Today we'll be going through the 2021 HSC Maths Advanced Paper. Hope you enjoy. So with multiple choice, there's always two ways of doing it. We can either solve it like a short answer question, or we can complete it like a multiple choice question by substituting in values until we get the correct one. It is a little bit faster if you do it this way, but I will show you both ways in case you want to do it properly. So let's start with just substituting in a random value for x to see which one is equivalent. So let's say I make x equal to 37 degrees. Now I'm choosing a number so random that it can't possibly cause um, any duplicate correct answers when there should only be one. So 37 degrees isn't a number like 30, 45, or 90, something that creates an exact value that could make A and C the same answer or something along those lines. So if I make X equal 37, that means that sine squared 5X, or 5 times 37 degrees, if I put that in my calculator, I'm going to get 0 0.0075. Now let's see what happens if I sub 37 into A. So what should happen is I'll get 1 plus cos squared 5 times 37 and that will be equal to 1.992. So what I can tell you now is that it is not A because it is not equivalent to what we got for sine squared 5x. So next we'll try B. B being 1 minus cos squared 5 times 37 and substituting that into the calculator we get 0 0.0075 so therefore B is our answer now if I wanted to do it properly I'd have to use my trigonometry identities so the first thing I want to do I'm trying to convert sine squared into cos squared as all of our multiple choice answers are in cos squared now recall the identity, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. Well, if we say that instead of writing x, we say 5x, what we'll get is sine squared 5x plus cos squared 5x should also equal 1. Now if I move the cos squared 5x to the other side, I'll get that cos squared 5x equals 1 minus cos squared 5x. So therefore, our answer is 1 minus cos squared 5x, which in this case is b. For the second question, the probability distribution table shows some discrete random variable x. How do we find an expected value? Well, an expected value is always the sum of x times p of x. So what I mean by that is all we have to do to solve this is do x times its probability for each of the variables. And that will equal 1.5. So therefore our answer is c. So when we think about domain of functions, the first thing I do is think about the domain of the function without anything special to it. So in this case, I'm straight away thinking about what is the domain of ln x normally? Well, if we recall ln x, it's a graph where it has an asymptote at x equals zero. So it looks like this. So what we realize is that in this case, x has to be greater than zero and it can't be equal to zero. So if I think about ln of one minus x, well, what we've done is now we've made it minus x, ln of minus x, and we've also added one. So if we draw this graph, putting a negative x flips the graph to be this way. 
so it horizontally reflects and then we've also added one so it pushes the graph to the right so the graph will now look like this with an asymptote at x equals 1. So the domain being what values of x can this function exist, we can say for certain that the answer is from negative infinity to 1, but not including 1. So therefore, our answer is d. So the next question asks us to find the graph which shows the cumulative number of downloads up to and including each day for the bell curve above. Well, as you can see, it starts off by gaining little CDs every day and then increasing to day 10 when it's receiving quite a few number of DVDs or downloads. And then it peters off again and there's only gaining a small number of downloads towards the end. So what that tells me is if we're thinking about this as a graph, like a line graph, it should start off small. It should start increasing more rapidly towards day 10. And then it will start gaining downloads less and less as we continue up to day 20. Now the curve that best describes that is graph C. Because as you can see with graph C, it starts off with getting a small amount of downloads at the beginning. And then as you accumulate over the days, it increases, the gradient is increasing until day 10, when they're starting to get less downloads now, and the graph will peter off again towards day 20. So the answer is C. So the first thing I notice about this multiple choice question is they have different Y intercepts and they're sloping in different ways. So they're the two things I'm going to want to test to find out which graph this is. Now to find our y intercept, all we have to do is make x equal to zero. So by subbing in x equals zero, what we'll get is y is equal to 10 times 0 0.8 to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is one. So this will be 10 times one. y will be 10. So that means our answer is either a or c. The next thing I wanna check is what direction this graph is sloping. Well, if we have a think about it, as x gets larger, that means that 0.8 will be times by itself more. For instance, if it, x was one, it would just be 0.8. If x is two, it'll be 0.8 times 0.8, which would be 0.64. And if we keep increasing that number, you can see that the graph's actually gonna get smaller. So as x increases, y decreases. Therefore, my answer must be A. So there are eight chocolates in a box, three have peppermint centers and five have caramel centers. This is probability without replacement because as you can see, Kim chooses a chocolate and eats it, which means it does not go back into the equation. So the question is asking, what is the probability that Kim and Sam choose chocolates with different centers? Let's start by building our probability tree. Now we're only going to focus on the PC and the CP branches as they're the only two scenarios where they choose chocolates with different centers. Now, if we take away a peppermint chocolate at the beginning, the probability of getting a caramel chocolate, well, yeah, there's still there's still five caramel chocolates left, but now that's only out of seven possible chocolates because we ate a peppermint chocolate. And then in the probability branch below, there's when we ate a caramel center first, well, there's still three peppermint chocolates, but now that's only out of seven. Now to find the probability, we just have to multiply each of the fractions in a branch and add those together. So what I mean is the probability of getting a peppermint then caramel was three on eight 
times by 5 on 7. And then we add that to 5 on 8, the probability of getting caramel first, multiplied by getting then the peppermint second. Putting that in our calculator, we're going to get the probability is equal to 15 on 28. So therefore, our answer is D. Okay, so let's have a look at what we know about this graph. It's asking us to commit f double dash of negative 2, f0, and f dash 3. Well, let's make a couple of assumptions here. First of all, f0 we know is negative, because if we sub in x is 0 and we look at our graph, we can see it's a negative number. Next, it's asking what the gradient at 3 is, f dash 3. Well, if we look at our graph, we can see that it's perfectly at its maximum. So any graph where that is occurring means that the gradient is zero. So f dash three is actually zero. And lastly, f double dash of minus two. Now that's describing the second derivative at the point minus two. And as we can see, it's occurring at a minima. Now, the second derivative of any minimum is always positive, and any second derivative of a maximum is always negative. So, looking at our four options, A, B, C, and D, our biggest is going to be our second derivative of negative 2, followed by F dash 3, and then F0, which we know is negative. So, therefore, the answer will be A. Okay, so next is another graph. Now, when I get questions which ask which the following could be the equation of this graph, I start by not looking at the multiple choice and just looking at the graph itself. I'm going to write down a few things. First of all, I can see that there's a, almost like a cubic function in the positive area. What that tells me is that x... Uh, minus something cubed is a factor of this equation. The second thing I know is that x is passing through a negative point. That tells me that x plus a number is a factor. Okay, and our third factor, I can see that it is neg a negative graph. And the way I determine this is if we look at the most right hand side of our graph, if it's coming from below, that means it's strictly negative. That means it's negative. So we're looking for a function that has a negative either in one of our factors or at the front of the whole question. Now let's compare our three factors with A, B, C, and D. So looking at A, I can see that it's got 2 plus x cubed. Well, I can already tell you that that doesn't fulfill our first criteria because we need x minus a number. Having a look at B, B fulfills our first criteria, which is x minus something cubed. It fulfills our second criteria, which is x plus a number. But there's no negative either in the one of the factors or at the front of the equation. So therefore, it cannot be B. Looking at C, now it doesn't exactly fulfill our first criteria, but we'll come back to that. It does fulfill our second criteria because it's, it's X plus a number. Now, as I said before, the negative can either be at the front or in a factor. Now, if we put a negative in a factor, what basically happens is it turns into k minus x cubed. So that's what happens if we put a negative actually in one of our factors. And that's actually exactly what's happened for C, which is why this could be a tricky question. So this graph is negative, and it's put it into x minus 2 to become 2 minus x. So therefore, our answer is actually C. And it's not D, 
because it doesn't fulfill our second criteria, which is x plus something. So it's not d. So what we know is that function f of x is odd and function g of x is even. Well, let's, choose, let's say gx is our most easy to understand even function, a parabola. So let's draw g of x. So there, there's g of x. And to make this question seem a little bit easier, let's say, we're going to say that g2 is equal to 1. Now, because this is even, that also means that g of minus 2 is 1. Because they can reflect upon the y-axis. Now, what this means is if we look at h of 2 versus h of negative 2, this is being equal to f of g of 2. This will be equal to f of 1. And simultaneously, this will also be equal to f of 1. So what we've learned, even though that f of x is an odd function and g of x is even, f of g of x will be even, so hx is even. That's the first thing we've got to understand. So if you have an odd function inside, if you have an even function inside an odd function, that function is still even. So we know that h of x is even. Next thing. We're looking at the tangent to this graph at x equals k. It has the equation mx plus c. What is the equation at x equals negative k? Well, if we think about an even curve, let's say that is k, then if we have a tangent at negative k, It's just going to be the same tangent, but with negative m. So therefore, our answer is b. So what we know about this graph, we're looking at cos, and we've created a line with a tangent at this point. Well, this point here, which is called A on our question, is going to be before 2 pi. Because the gradient at 2 pi is 0. So the gradient M must have touched the line before that point. So we know that A is less than 2 pi. Now, by extension, if we were to say 1 over A, because A is a smaller number, that means that it's a smaller number than 2 pi. That means it's 1 over a will be greater than 1 over 2 pi. So therefore, that knocks out a as an option. We're left with either b, c, or d. The next thing we've got to figure out is how this involves m, which is the gradient of our tangent. Now, technically speaking, this, the point at which they touch is below where y equals 1. As y equals 1 when x equals 2 pi, which is the peak of the cos x curve. Now, if that's the case, that means that m has a smaller gradient than 1 over a. Because 1 over a would be the line that extends up to that point. So the next thing we know is that 1 over a is greater than m. That knocks out c leaving either b or d. Now, 1 on 2 pi would be the gradient if the line was to pass to the point 2 pi 1. So therefore, we know that m is a greater gradient than 1 on 2 pi. So m is greater than 1 on 2 pi. Therefore, our answer must be b to fulfill these three criteria. All right, lecture laners, I hope this was helpful. Stay tuned for part two and I'll catch you in the next one.